this episode of the FXTM educational series, we're going to be taking a closer look at the momentum oscillator. Like many oscillators, it is a study of price over time. It's basically calculated as the close price as of the most current period, so I'm going to put a little i in parentheses after that, divided by the close price of i minus n. And by n, I mean that's a look back period. So for example, it will tell us what the close price from today's bar looks like relative to the close price of the bar n periods ago, which is uh, by default that's 14 periods ago. So obviously if the price is continuing to accelerate beyond the close price of 14 periods ago, then we're going to see a momentum oscillator that is going higher. Now if the opposite were true, then the momentum oscillator would generally be falling. That's what we would expect to see. And in fact here I've drafted up an example of what the momentum oscillator looks like. And as you can see, as the price began to decline, uh, the momentum oscillator was also declining as it shows that relationship between the close price now versus the close price at the beginning of the look-back period. Now what's great about the momentum oscillator is that it can provide very valuable signals for traders who are trying to identify a period of time when momentum is not just tracking along with the trend, but rather when it's diverging from the trend. So as an example, what we look for specifically would be a period of time when the momentum oscillator, which tends to reach a extreme high when prices have been moving very quickly to the upside. And then it forms a lower high later while the price actually makes a higher high. So you can see an example of this here in my sketch of a price chart that I have higher tops on the price while at the same time the momentum oscillator is forming lower tops on the oscillator itself. So what it's telling us is that yes, it looks like the price is making gains, but in fact momentum is beginning to wane. Now the momentum oscillator does have a midpoint that runs through the middle of its range, and that's 100. And what that means, you could imagine that basically what it's telling you is that anytime the oscillator is exactly in the middle, then you know that the close price today is the same as the close price or 100% of the close price n periods ago or 14 periods ago. So as the price diverges and then the momentum oscillator crosses below that midpoint, that tells us something about a trading opportunity to the downside or certainly a indication that the market is losing momentum and bulls should be aware of a relatively high risk environment. Now the opposite can also be true where we can see a situation where the price may be declining. So we can see these lower bottoms on the price while at the same time we have rising bottoms on the momentum oscillator. Now what that's telling us is that bullish momentum is beginning to rise, which is good. And that certainly may present opportunities for longs to enter the market or add to a position or for shorts to consider the conditions of the market may be a little bit more adverse, a uh, higher risk. So this would be a important bullish indicator, especially as it crosses beyond this midpoint here at 100%, telling us something about the direction of momentum overall. So let's take a look at a couple of charts to see what this looks like in real life. Now, as you can see here on this chart, there was an extreme high as the price was rising and the momentum oscillator is unbounded. So there is no upper limit. When we say extreme high, what we're generally referring to are extreme highs relative to where it's been recently. So that extreme high formed, but although the price continued to move higher to higher tops, the momentum oscillator actually formed a lower top. So this completed a bearish divergence indicating that momentum was waning and the price may in fact decline. Now you can see on this example that the price was declining and formed a bottom at the same time that the momentum oscillator formed a fairly extreme bottom. And again, the momentum oscillator is unbounded, so that's an extreme reading relative to where it's been. Then the price, although it did actually form a subsequently lower bottom, that did not match the higher bottom that formed on the momentum oscillator. So this was telling us something about bullish momentum beginning to build in this divergence. Now, as I mentioned at the whiteboard, that cross of the 100% line can be a good trigger for bullish or bearish opportunities. Now, that cross can actually be confirmed by other oscillators. The MACD is a common indicator to add to a momentum analysis and, in fact, can provide 
early warning that we may be getting that cross of the 100% line in the near term. So you can see in this example that the momentum oscillator was beginning to rise. And in fact, the MACD crossed above its baseline. But just previous to that, the MACD had crossed above its signal line, which was giving traders a early warning sign here that we may be looking at a cross not only of the MACD above its baseline, but also the momentum oscillator above its 100% line. The momentum oscillator does a really good job of identifying two things. Number one, which direction is the trend actually going? And number two, how strong is that price movement? How much momentum do we really have behind either a bullish or a bearish trend? How likely is it that it may be running out of steam and even potentially reverse?